first try an example to design for a member subjected to moment Azure and Share loops concurrently. The member is a rectangular hollow section RHS which is to be used as a primary floor beam of 7.2 meter span in a multi-story building. There are two point loops of 58 kN applied at point B and point C through a secondary beam. The spans are equally divided into three of 2.4 meter and the secondary beam acts as a restraint point to the primary beam. The question asks us to assess the suitability of the hot roll sections of 200 x 100 x 16 in the grid of 355 for these applications. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. This slide outlines the calculation steps to design the member subjected to combined moment share and compression. First, you need to determine the air shear force, the bending moment, and the shear loads of the member. Obtain the section property from the table of property. Section classifications referring to table 5.2. The compression resistance, the bending resistance, and the shear resistance refer to the clause written here. Next, you check the effects of the combined bending shear and shear loops. Check for the buckling resistance in the major and the minor axis. Check for the lateral torsional buckling. Check for the deflections. And lastly, check for the buckling resistance of the combined bending and shear compression in both axes. The relevant clauses are outlined here. To determine the load, you need to sketch the diagram of the air shear force, shear force, and the bending moment. The member is subjected to an air shear force of 90 kN, therefore the air shear force will be the same throughout the span. To determine the shear force diagram, you first need to obtain the vertical reactions at A and D, and then sketch the shear force diagram accordingly. The maximum shear load is found to be 58 kN. And then to determine the bending moment diagram, you can obtain the areas of the shear force diagram to be equivalent to the moment. The moment is found to be 139.2 kN meter. Based on this three diagram, you know that the member is subjected to a 90 kN shear load. 58 kN shear force and 139.2 kN meter moment at the same time, which is at the region of B and C. Next, you determine the section property of the member. Search the table of property and write down all the sections properties given in the table for the section. Determine the use rank of the member. The steel grip is given as 355. The thinness is 16 mm, which is less than 40 mm. Therefore, according to table 3.1, the use rank should be equal to 355 Newton per mm square. Based on the clause 3.2.6, you are obtaining the modulus of elasticity and also shear modulus. Next, you determine the classifications of the member. The use rank is obtained 355. Substitute into the equations, you get the epsilon equals to 0.814. Then determine the C per T ratio for the web and for the flank. The C and the T's are given in the graphical presentation here which your C per T ratios are obtained here. The obtained C per T ratio is checked against the limits and it is found that the entire section is considered as class 1.
Next, you determine the compressive resistance of the member. Use these equations, which is in the function of area times the yield strength divided by a factor of safety. The resistance is compared with the load and it is found to be higher than the load. Therefore, the compressive resistance is considered acceptable. As for the moment resistance, this equation is used. It is in the function of section modulus times the U strength divided by the factor of safety. The moment resistance is then compared with the moment load and is found to be greater than the moment load. Therefore, the moment resistance is considered acceptable. Next, we check for the shear resistance of the member. First, you need to acquire the effective shear area. This equation is given in Eurocode. You may obtain it from there. Substitute the section area with these equations and you obtain the shear capacity of 1134 kN. Compare the resistance against the loop and you will find that the shear resistance is acceptable. Next, you need to check for the shear buckling. The requirement is this and the eta referring to Eurocode 3 is equal to 1.2 for the steel grade less than 460. The limiting is found to be 48.8 and the actual HW per TW is equal to 12.5. The actual ratio is less than the limiting ratio, therefore the shear buckling check is not required and the shear buckling doesn't occur and it doesn't reduce the shear resistance of the member. Next you check for the bending and air shear force according to clause 6.2.9.1. First, you need to identify whether there are going to be any reductions due to the combined effect. Check against these two criteria. The shear loop is found to be 90. The 25% of the shear capacity is found to be 736.6 kN, which is greater than the shear loops. That means the first criteria is satisfied. You need to have both criteria to be satisfied for you to omit the reduction effects of the combined conditions. Therefore, you have to check for the second criteria. The 50% area of the web times the yield strength. It is found to be also greater than the loads. That means both criteria are satisfied. Therefore, there won't be any reduction in terms of the moment resistance. Next, you need to check for the buckling. To do so, the buckling can also occur at the major axis and the minor axis. Therefore, you need to determine the slenderness of the member in the major and the minor axis. It is stated that the connections are all pink. That means the critical lengths are always multiplied with 1.0 L. And because of the secondary beam there, so the effective buckling length for the minor axis it will be 2.4 meter. As for the major axis, the effective buckling length it will be equals to 7.2 meter. Check for the critical axial force by using these equations. Then you will find that it is equal to 1470. Then determine the slenderness ratio, lambda prime. Both are found to be greater than 0 0.2. That means buckling can occur in the major axis and also in the minor axis. Next, you need to determine the resistance of the member in terms of the major and minor axis due to buckling. To do so, you require the reduction factor chi. In the equation reduction factor chi, there are elements of phi. 
So these five equations is given here and it requires another uh, factors which is the imperfection factors. So now we need to determine the imperfection factors. Referring to the table 6.2 and this, it is considered as a hollow section, hollow conditions and the strength class is 275. The buckling curve is A. Referring to table 6.1 for the buckling curve A, the alpha for the buckling curve A is equals to 0 0.21. Substitute the value into the equations to determine the phi. The phi is obtained to be 1.63 and 0 0.92 for the major and the minor axis. Substitute the obtained number to determine the chi. The chi is found to be 0 0.41 and 0 0.77 for the major and the minor axis. Determine the resistance capacity of the member due to the reductions for the buckling resistance. It is found that the major axis seems to be more critical. Therefore, check against the loads and which is found to be greater than the actual loads so the buckling resistance is considered acceptable. Next, we check for the lateral torsional buckling of the member. The lateral torsional buckling occurs on the minor axis where the member is deforming sideways. With that, the effective length of the member is limited by the lateral restraint points at A, B, C and D. This leads to three segments of the member. Theoretically, you're supposed to check for the lateral torsional buckling of every single segment. However, in this case, all the three segments have the same effective span. And segment A, B and C, D happens to be the same. Therefore, you do not require to check all three segments. You may choose to check two segments here, but the segment BC seems to be more critical than segment AB. You may choose to check for the segment BC only, as if BC is found to pass, the likelihood of the segment AB and CD to fail is small. Therefore, for these questions, the segment BC checking is sufficient. With that, we need to determine the elastic critical moment by using these equations. Saying that we are checking the section BC, assume K is equal to 1. Referring to table F1.1, when the moment of the section is the same throughout and k is equal to 1, c1 will be equal to 1. The critical length it will be 1.0 times the span, which is 2400 mm. And as the member is a hollow section, it means that the cross section is closed. Therefore, the wrapping contributions, which is this one, will be equal to 0. In the equation here, when this is equal to 0, substitute the relevant value into the equations. You obtain the elastic critical moment to be 3000 plus kNm. Next, you determine the lateral torsional slenderness by using this equation. The lambda prime LT is fine to be 0.23. Next, you determine the buckling curve and also the imperfection factors due to the lateral torsional buckling. Referring to table 6.4, rectangular hollow sections is in the category of other cross sections. The buckling curve it will be class D. And referring to table 6.2, 
the alpha LT will be equals to 0 0.76 substitute the value obtained for the phi LT and it is found to be 0 0.54 substitute the value into the reduction factor chi LT and it is found to be 3% lower than the moment resistance and the moment resistance of the member due to the lateral torsional buckling is obtained to be 169.5 kN meter. The moment resistance is then compared with the load and is found to be acceptable when the resistance is greater than the load. Next, you are supposed to check for the effect of the combined bending and axial compressions in both axes. That means this equation is applied and there will be a lengthy calculations in terms of KYY, KZY. You may refer to the notes given to go through the calculation process. These equations are given in the Annex A and Annex B for the Eurocode 3. The members are eventually found to be acceptable.